says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. And, 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 and this is just for teaching sake. A lot of people, uh, theologians connect, have two uh, references to this particular 120 years. Some say it took Noah 120 years to build the ark, and that was the amount of time he was going to give man to refocus or change. But then others think that the lifespan of, of, of human beings was reduced to 120 years, and there's evidence of that because Noah died at 120 years. So either or could be all of the above, but I just want to throw that out there. And verse 4 says, there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, the sons of God came into the doors of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. This verse 4 is probably one of the more debated, the, debated scriptures in the Bible. Uh, but here we see now, they are also referred to these giants as Nephilim. And the word Nephilim is, is, means fallen. So we're talking about fallen angels who, 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 who had sexual relationships and established these giants, okay? Giants were born. The problem now is that the flood came and it was only eight people, Noah's family, right? The, 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 uh, these are the descendants of Seth. We know Adam had children, we know Cain killed Abel, yes. but Seth, God honored his bloodline, which led to Noah, right? And, and so, so everyone else who had the breath of life died. Yes. So if we're going to say now the descendants of Anak are a, a product of this particular verse in, in verse 4 of chapter 6, then the behavior had to continue after the flood. This is just folks who really study the Bible. I just need to throw that out. Because a lot of us, you know, we 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 into the word, you know. And so I needed to just throw that. Out. It's a good study, but for these giants to be established, the, 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 this process had to continue after the flood, because everybody would have died. Okay. But either or, we are talking about some some humongous men. All right. Getting back to Numbers thirteen. What, what these spies saw were without question, okay, tied to Goliath. David comes on the scene probably about four to five hundred years later. Goliath, remember when David took on Goliath? Yes. He was a part of the Philistine. Uh, uh, he was from the, uh, from the city of Gath. Gath was tied. All that was tied to the descendants of Amak. I know I'm giving y'all a lot, but it's all good. What I'm saying is, Goliath now, we are connected. Goliath represents the same people that the spies saw, okay? And when we talk about Goliath, we are talking about now, theologians most agree that Goliath was probably somewhere around 10 feet tall, okay? Uh, uh, we're talking about his armor that he wore totaled over 200 pounds. Now, in the military, our military soldiers, they can carry anywhere from 60 to 150 pounds, but we got some, 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 some vets in here. But that's carrying your stuff from one place to another. That's not fighting with yourself. Goliath fought with over 200 pounds on him. That means he had to be agile. He had to be swift, duck, he had to be able to move. You know, we're talking about a massive guy. We're talking about somebody that's probably, give me that next, that next photo. Now, y'all can't see it, I wish this was light. Can y'all see it? This looks figurative, but this probably was a literal picture of what it looked like when David went at the lot. I'm giving you now an idea of what these spies saw when they saw giants in the land. They're talking about a massive, and we don't want to get on David now. Because where was David at? <laughs> David was not even here. David had no flesh involved at all. David had been in the secret place of the Most High God. David's confidence was, my God is bigger than that giant. Descendants 
of AMAC. That's what more than likely they look like. So when the spies came back and gave this report, 12, 10 out of the 12 gave a bad report. They gave a correct report. Their analysis was correct. I don't even know you can tell the story. But it's, it's what's behind the story. You know what I mean? Because the, the, the good report also spoke about the descendants of Anak. But they said, let us go up at once and possess it. What makes the bad report a bad report is because they were declaring that we will fail mm -hmm. and we won't accomplish it. Yes. They had forgotten all that God had done for them. And when we tell, when we tell our God that, that he can't overcome the giant, we are basically saying, well, I forgot about all that you did for me yesterday. I forgot about all the times you bought me out. I read this Bible all the time, and you know what? I, I, I. So in other words, what you're doing with your homework is going to reflect how you see the job. Yes. Bad report, what makes it a bad report is the fact that there was hopelessness. Yes. And God does not want you looking at your circumstances with hopelessness. We have all hope. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Right? Look at now, real quick before I close. Look at verse 1 of chapter 14. This is what makes this report a bad report. It says, so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept all night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. Or, now listen now, remember now, we told you now, they are positioned right between coming out and going in. And that's where you and I are. We're right there. We're ready to go in. You're ready to see the changes. You're ready to see the yokes come on. You're ready to see the finances change. You're ready to see healing in your family. You're ready to see all of that. This is not the time to doubt because of the giant. Right? They wept all night. If only we had died in Egypt. Or if only we had died in the wilderness. Here's what gets me. Verse 3. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? And then watch it. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and what? Return and return to Egypt. Some of y'all talk, some of y'all think like that. I'd have been better off over here. And I'd have been better off doing that. No. You're right between the coming out and the going in. I mean, God showed them the fruit of the land. Hallelujah. This is why this was a bad report. But in verse 30, Caleb cries to people and says, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are able to overcome it. Caleb saw the giants, but had a whole different view. Amen. Give God praise in the house. Yeah. focus on the fruit of the land. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Milk and honey. Yes. Right? All right, Sean. And then finally, that last picture. This is Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus spent, according to the book of Matthew, the majority of his ministry in Galilee, right? We know the woman at the well is when he had to be traveling through Samaria. Right? He ran, you know, he did that purposely. But the majority of his ministry was in Galilee, and I think it's in chapter 18, where it, 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 it 
makes it clear that he's now ready to go into Jerusalem. Jesus was ready to go now and face the giants. He was going to face the giants because it's time for him to take back. It's time for him to, for redemption of his people. It's time for him to take back you and I who were bound by the evil one. Jesus now is being celebrated by people and he already knows that the majority of those same folks are going to sentence him to death. Yes. Right off the bat, he's coming into Jerusalem and he knows the very people that are cheering him on are going to let a very well-known criminal go free. Jesus was prepared to take on the giant of having his body scourged. He was ready to take on the giants of the religious community who were vicious, who treated him horrible. He was ready to take on the giant of Pontius Pilate, who and, 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 his, and the Roman soldiers who stripped him down and verbally abused him. We don't even know what was said to Jesus by those Roman soldiers. He was ready to take on the, on the giant of being humiliated by nailed to a cross. The most humiliating way to die was being nailed to a cross. When Jesus steps into Jerusalem, he is ready to take on the giants. Why? Because of the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. Jesus knew he was going to glory. He was letting, letting, letting nothing stop him from the fruit of the land. I see myself in the glory of God. I see them in Shadow Baptist in the year 2018 who were going to need me. Jesus took on the giants. Hallelujah. So that he could take you and 